<laughs> uh, in the sense of I was probably one of the greatest pagans that ever lived. Um, I looked after all of my needs. I worked for the phone company 25 years. Um, I did an early retirement and started my own business. Uh, but before that, I was very blessed. I had a really good job. It paid me well. I bought my house um, and had cars. I traveled to India, um, to the Middle East, uh, various places in Mexico, Canada, um, did uh, Europe, and um, I did a lot of traveling. I had a, what most people would say, oh, you had a great life. Um, and, and actually, I was just serving myself. I was just looking for things for what's good for me um, and doing very little about helping my, my fellow human beings. We're now at the primary school that we have for Santa Maria. We have about 100 children here. We also have some children that come from various ranches that live close by to us. Uh, they're the poor children that don't have enough money to go to school into town. And we offer them school as well. We want to offer as many children as we can to come to school to take advantage of their studies. Uh, like I said, the, the poverty here in Mexico is very, very um, prevalent. There's, uh, so many children that need an education and they don't get one. And we'll be able to come in here and maybe talk with some of the children, watch them while they're in their classrooms, and some of the dedicated teachers and director that we have here that really want to see uh, the children take advantage of an education. They give a lot of their time and effort here, but all of this costs a lot of money, uh, but it's well worth it. Okay. Yes, Maria Dolores, she's our director here at the school. She's been here for 12 years, but she's a very, very dedicated uh, director. She has been helping here, and uh, people have offered her twice her salary to go somewhere else, but she loves the school, she loves the work that is being done here in Santa Maria. There's a lot I can tell you about Santa Maria. It's from its early starts. Uh, with helping just the poor and then growing into helping those children who come from broken homes or homes that are dysfunctional, uh, children that come off the streets or that the welfare system here in Querétaro uh, bring them to us. So we have a lot of children with various needs. Uh, we're going to go into the sixth grade class and they're right in the middle of their their school. We're interrupting their school, sorry. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Uh, gracias. Siéntense, por favor. Uh, we, there's been an average anywhere, I and mean, there's no average. Each year is different. There's from 225 to over 300 children. But we've also, in the last 10, 15, uh, 20 years. I, I can't remember when they started with the first seniors. We've also had seniors coming in, so we have about 35 seniors. We also have, uh, it started out as an orphanage, but then father saw the poor and he couldn't say no to the poor, so he was helping them. Then we also started helping out disabled children. Then there were children that came from dysfunctional families, and it, it, the door is just about open to anyone that needs help. Hi, thanks. And you? Okay, so you want to study to be a chef? Yeah. Uh, and I have, uh, how do you say, ventaja? I have the advantage. Advantage because I can speak English. Uh, so I only have to to learn the the Italian. And, and that's all. Uh, and I can be chef. Oh, <coughs> so you want to be an Italian chef? Yeah. Spaghetti. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Lasagna. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I like to cook pizzas. <laughs> pizzas, ah. The reason why your family brought you here? It's because in, in the school that I was in the secondary, mm -hmm. I was so so bad in the grades. I all times reprove and and at the last the the how do you say director? The director. The director said to me that he don't want to to that I study on that school, so I come here oh. and because. In outside, the people don't want me, mm. so I come here. Uh, and how are you doing in school here? Mm, I change. You change? Yeah, doing a lot. Very well. Yeah. Yes. yes, you are doing very well. Good. Good. It could be his family um, comes from a very poor family, and what happens is they don't have time for him. To, usually, mothers who are single parents. They're working from 7 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock at night. And so there's no time to give attention to the children. So he's been with us for less than a year. And his, his studying habits have improved tremendously. He's doing very well in school. And now he's even looking to his future. He has hope for a future when other places have rejected him. So I, I think I'm in that road to to um, to go for my first heart attack, but it's a great work and it, it does take a lot out of us, but it's well worth it. Do you think that you'll be doing this until you're well, I, sick? Like I told my superiors that I don't want to stay a day longer than after I die. When I die, take me out of here, but until then I'm ready to work. <laughs> to celebrate Mass at the Casa de Jovenes, the where the teenage girls are, and it's a mass for the girls as well as for the poor. So there's a lot of work to do. And so it wasn't until later in life, after uh, discerning and discerning, I decided to um, try entering the priesthood again. And that's when I came to North Salt. And I did a common look, as they call it, as we call it. And um, I came, I looked, I saw, and God was merciful, and He, he brought me in. Y con este mismo canto hacemos de nuestro canto de entrada con mucho entusiasmo. Ahora aplaudiendo, por favor. And they asked me to come down, and I came down. And I didn't want to come down because I didn't think I have any patience for children. And my Spanish was next to nil. And so when I came down here, it was a struggle for my Spanish. But it was um, a great gift. I, I love the work. Uh, God gave me a special grace to work with the children and elderly, and um, I, I couldn't be happier. And I, I see a great blessing that God has given me for being here. I, unfortunately, I had a talk with the government uh, leaders in Querétaro, which is a large city near where we're at, and they said that they had 600 more children to place. And I've seen the place where they sort of warehouse the children. There's 600 of them there. And my heart goes out to them because the warehousing is a good word because they don't care for their formation. They don't care for their schooling. Uh, they're just there until they can find a home for them. And there aren't that many homes that will accept children. And we do. We just don't have the room. So if things were better, I'd like to build another house to house more children, uh, more buildings. Um, I have a commitment from um, the sisters of the Society of Our Lady, the Most Holy Trinity, that they will send more sisters to help. And they need those kind of role models of mothers who care for them and love them um, and, and share with them the good and the bad that happens throughout life. My name is Sister Amada. 
And uh, and what was your name? Before? Yeah, before. That's a secret. <laughs> and um, and uh, what do you do here? I am in. I am the madre, the mother for seventy plus boys, mm -hmm. and uh, for about for twenty of them, I'm. I take care of all of their daily needs, just like a regular mom would. Um, getting them to eat, to to get up, to to get their schoolwork done, and take care of all their needs and whatever. And and I pray with all of the boys. Um, we meditate on the on the word every day and try to. They come from broken homes, so to try and give them as much as we can. And and what's important is love. And here's, do you find it hard at all? Yeah, it's, it's taxing. It's exhausting because it, it wears on you. And, and there's so many that you have to give attention to. Um, it's draining. If, without prayer and without, without Christ, there's no way. Because that's all we're giving is Jesus here. And so, yeah, they have so many needs, the boys do. They come from bro broken homes, broken, uh, broken backgrounds, every kind of abuse you can imagine. And what they've experienced and witnessed in the world is is incredible for their age. Do they sometimes break down and cry? Or? Oh yeah, uh -huh. especially when they come and they talk to me about their moms. They love their mothers and and they'll come and say, my mom came last week and she's sick and and can you please pray for her? And they just break down and cry. But whenever they mention their moms, they, they get all teary-eyed. Oh. It's for me, mama. Oh yes. There, yeah. So their moms are somewhat in their lives still. Yeah, they, their moms are, most every one of them is a single, come from single parent homes, so all they have is their mom, really. And their mom is either working full time and uh, can't take care of their, her children, or she's on drugs or abusive, or living with another man and can't take care of her own child or who won't accept her own child, so, yeah. Well, it's a great change. Um, and I think when we think about, you know, it's better to give than receive, there's no better way of receiving is than to give of yourself and to see just the others who can enjoy a little bit of what God has shared with me. Uh, God has been very generous with me. And We're looking at our dam. How many, I don't know, maybe you can estimate. It's about 30 feet high the dam is. But if you look on this other side, it's already filled with sand and, and, and dirt and very little water. This should all be filled with water. We just had a great rainy season. But unfortunately, it's filled with sand, so we have very little water inside the dam and we can't feed our crops. So unfortunately, the, the government has come up with a plan not to take out the dirt, but to build the dam a little bit higher, because that's the cheapest way to go and hopefully that the water will fill up more there, but in a few years the sand will come up again and we'll have the same problem. You can't just continue to build, in my opinion, that, that it's the simplest solution that they have instead of a solution that'll be good and long term. It's a quick solution. So you you're have for too long. you uh, grow your own crops here? We grow our own crops, so water is essential for all of us here. The water that seeps into the ground also provides a spring that's our drinking water. But if we don't have water that saves at the dam, it affects us all the way downstream, literally. But here are some of the fields that we have. We try to grow our own corn, and I know you've worked, Luis has worked uh, a lot in the corn fields and the other fields that we have. You can see corn growing, and behind the corn, which you can't see, are cactus plants. There's some green patches where we have alfalfa alpha growing. And it's very important. The children need to work and see that uh, work is an important part of life. For the short term, uh, we won't be having water this year. And we'll probably be losing our crops 
uh, whatever it doesn't grow in the couple of months that we have water in corn you need a number of months to grow as well as alfalfa and we'll probably be losing those crops this year because they're working on the dam and trying to get that fixed but it's a short-term solution uh, we'll be having the same problem next year if that doesn't get done quickly and every take everything takes forever to get done uh, when you don't have the money to 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 fix it right away um, when they come here it's it's a beautiful thing to see when there's a transformation and you can see the change in them um, I have so many other children too. This one, uh, young, he's a young man now, he's been with us four and a half years. Uh, he came to us as an orphan. His family couldn't control him because he was angry. Um, and it just so happened that last month, uh, and he, and he had a lot of anger around him. And, and who wouldn't, if, as an orphan, doesn't have a mother or father to take care of him. And, and his family had moving him from family to family. Uh, from his cousin to cousins and so he was rejected by all of them they brought him here and he would always walk with his shoulders hunched like this and his head down and anybody would talk to him he'd, he'd be angrily responding and something clicked inside of him and he came to me about a month ago and he says father I just want to first of all apologize because of the anger that I've shown you and so many others and he said I realized that now I have a hope that nobody else wanted me and, and you accepted me here and I see what you're doing and now he holds his head up and he's, he's smiling and he comes and, and he talks and he's a completely changed person. So I think when people come here uh, they, they see a difference um, and they see that we care about them, we put order th in their lives, we put God in their lives, uh, they have school that they go to, they see hope, they see light at the end of a tunnel that maybe they never saw before. So I think that's what they need to see. They need to see that somebody cares and somebody's doing something to help them.